If you take a look at the bare basics of what makes a video game tick, you'll start to find patterns. Enemy patterns help you plan your course for attack, patterns that determine the spawn points for all of your favourite items, and even rhythm-based patterns to help you know when you should and shouldn't jump. All of these patterns help to build the realistic, immersive and free-flowing worlds we love to explore. When in reality, it's just people walking the exact same path over and over and over again until a player breaks the chain. That's the key to video games, right? Mastering the patterns so that you can conquer all of those difficult levels to ultimately beat the game. But what if I told you that there is actually a much larger pattern at play here? Because you see, every single video game in existence fits in with this pattern. They're all linked to it in a number of different ways. Like this was some kind of grand scheme all along. So my question for today is, what's up with video games and the number three? <laughs> Let's take baby steps here and start with a classic on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Three words, three letters, the NES. And we're already starting to make some connections here. The second coming of Jesus Christ, Mario here, had an illustrious trilogy on the system, finalised with what is considered by many to be the peak of this trilogy. Now, just to preface this entire video, good and bad are totally subjective concepts, so I'll be viewing everything from a more general audience perspective as best I can in this video. But whether we're taking into account Mario 2, or the actual Mario 2, I think it's safe to say that the vast majority would agree that, yeah, this is absolutely the best of these three games. It's got all the different themed worlds, the airship levels, and lots of fun action to be had elsewhere. You've even got the gambling mini-games, like the slot machine, where you need to match up the same image three times. I hate this thing. But the idea that the third game of a series is also generally considered the peak doesn't stop there. On to another Nintendo classic, The Legend of Zelda. The first game was groundbreaking, the second game was... ambitious, let's just leave it at that for now, and the third console game in the series, A Link to the Past on Super Nintendo, is still considered the best of the three. Hell, some fans may even cite Link to the Past as the best game of the series overall, even after years of phenomenal games. And let's not forget, this is a series where the number three is deeply embedded into its history, as the entire point of these games is to go around recovering pieces of the Triforce. You can't convince me there isn't some suspicious shit going on here, especially when Majora's Mask comes along after this with its three-day Doom Clock scenario. Now, of course, The Legend of Zelda would get a little sidetracked with the Four Sword games, but that's okay, because there are still plenty of series we can take a look at that peaked with the third installment. Just look at Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, moving up to the next generation from its predecessors. It's a similar story as Link to the Past, actually. I think nostalgia definitely helps to play an important role here. Look at Halo 3, which is another good example. Sure, the second game was a classic, but whether or not you feel it's better than Halo 3, it's hard not to get all warm and fuzzy levelling up to a new system for this beast of an experience. The same thing happened for the WWE Smackdown games. Starting on the PS1, they were a blast, but that first PS2 game, while lacking in some areas, was still just like, whoa, this is next gen, baby. 
until you look at the PS2 Smackdown trilogy and realise again that the third release trumps all of the previous efforts. This would then start a pattern that is still continuing on through the series to this day, with every third game being a big step up. And that's without even mentioning iToy 3, Tekken 3, and Mortal Kombat 3 filling the same shoes. Or hell, just play Mortal Kombat Trilogy, that's just as good. It may be up for debate with fans, but Sly 3 is certainly superior in my opinion, and Uncharted 3 is a whopper title as well. And let's not forget Guitar Hero. The original was cutting edge, the sequel was a good addition, but Guitar Hero 3 just kicks your ass. 666 may be the number of the beast, but 333 delivers the best in video games. But if you want to talk about earth-shattering, monumental releases through video game history, then look no further than Grand Theft Auto 3. Absolutely, next to the original games, the revolutionary 3D sandbox title is superior on all fronts. But, this technically isn't the third game in the series. That title belongs to GTA 2. We had the original game, clunky but functional, followed by Grand Theft Auto London, then GTA 2. And it still fits the pattern. This is easily the best of the three games. Missions are more enjoyable, the game's structure has been improved, the frame rate doesn't have a fucking stroke at every intersection. It's a fun game for sure. And much like the SmackDown games I mentioned, the first sixth generation title knocks them all out of the park, but once the third 3D title rolled around, there was no competition. San Andreas is absolutely the peak of this trilogy. But see, I keep talking about trilogies, even when the games in question are not numbered 1, 2 and 3. Chronological numbering is irrelevant here, and that's because even these big bloated series like Mario, like Legend of Zelda, and like Grand Theft Auto, all of these series can be broken down into distinct trilogies. For example, Grand Theft Auto has three top-down 2D games, three early 3D games, three Game Boy games, three PSP games, and Grand Theft Auto 6 will inevitably be the third modern 3D game of the series. And I truly wonder if GTA 6 will follow the trends set by the third early 3D title, San Andreas, and take place across three cities. But it's these modern GTA games where things start to get really interesting. Grand Theft Auto 4 had the classic three districts of Liberty City, with three different campaigns across each, including additional episodes with The Lost and Damned and Ballad of Gay Tony. GTA 5 took things a step further by having three main protagonists, which could be selected to play as at any time. And that's without all the other references to the number three in this game, like the three different endings. Or what about the fabled Mount Chiliad mystery revolving around this strange mural? Fans have been trying to solve this thing since the game released, but isn't it obvious? The UFO represents those annoying enemies from Crash 3's future levels. The Egg references Spyro 3, of course, since the entire game is basically one big Easter egg hunt. And finally, the jetpack is from the final expansion released for The Sims 3, known as Into the Future, where a jetpack could be used to traverse the map. And if that's not enough to prove my theory accurate, this expansion pack released only five weeks after Grand Theft Auto V. Try to tell me there isn't a higher power controlling our minds every time we pick up a controller. You're all just afraid to admit the truth, that we've all been sucked into this conspiracy.
Uh, but hang on a minute. Something's not lining up correctly. Don't get me wrong, Crash Bandicoot 3 is a really good game, but a lot of people, myself included, would argue that Crash Bandicoot 2 is better. Same for Spyro, actually. Year of the Dragon is often on the receiving end of criticism, while the second game is beloved. And as for The Sims, again, as much as I personally love the third entry in the series, it just can't keep up with the polish and quality of The Sims 2. That must be the exception to the rule. If the third game is not the majority favourite, then it's almost always the second game that receives all that love. I mean, just look at Call of Duty. You never hear anybody talk about the third game. It's always about Call of Duty 2. And this is echoed for the Modern Warfare trilogy. Fans agree that while 3 was still a fun game, it was a step down from Modern Warfare 2. Same scenario with the Skate games. I know people love the third game, but that's only because it's a glitch fest. So the previous title is easily superior. I mean, just think of all the games that fit this new rule. The Dirt games peaked with Dirt 2, the original Sonic the Hedgehog trilogy, while they're all awesome, 3 generally takes a back seat to 2 most of the time, again with Donkey Kong Country, Dickhead Double Trouble was a vast step down after Diddy's Kong Quest, it also explains why a lot of my previous examples could be up for debate, such as Sly 2 vs Sly 3, or Halo 2 vs Halo 3. Now remember, good and bad are incredibly opinionated. But trying to look at these games on a technical level, there are possibly more examples of franchises starting to go downhill by the third instalment than there ever was for the original rule that saw the third game as the best. I think we need to explore this new exception further. So let's take a cheeky peek at a highly rated series where the second game is better than the third. Red Dead. This series has some really weird shit going on with the number three out of the gate. There are only three Red Dead games, the third and most recent being Red Dead Redemption 2 which is actually a prequel to Red Dead Redemption, the second game in the series. Though it was actually the first title to use the Redemption name. But then if Red Dead 2 actually takes place before Red Dead, then Red Dead is technically Red Dead 2, even though Red Dead 2 is technically Red Dead 3. Jesus, they're gonna put me in a padded cell after this. Anyway. Safe to say, nobody remembers poor old Red Dead Revolver, so let's just focus on the Redemption titles. Red Dead Redemption, being the second game of this series, was an instant classic. However, even though it was still an incredible game, Red Dead 3 Redemption 2, which is actually Redemption 1, did experience a lot of mixed feelings among players. And I would have to agree. Even though I enjoyed it in the end, that didn't make up for the endurance of unfinished, clunky, and poorly executed game mechanics. The story was phenomenal, but the overall experience was far from it. For me, anyway. But that's not to say it was a bad game, by any means. Maybe just not as good. And if you enjoyed it more than the first Red Dead Redemption, then that's awesome. This is not to draw battle lines, it's to show that the number 3 has such a great impact over every game we play. It's offered us some of the best games ever, but if it doesn't do that, then it begins the downward spiral for so many franchises. Look at Banjo-Kazooie, how did this happen? It didn't even look like this series was going to see a third game until this shit dropped down into the bowl. And that's the third big connection here. Most franchises are lucky if they can even get an official third game. 
We only just got Kingdom Hearts 3 after many years of waiting. The Last Guardian is another one most people never expected to see the light of day, and that's without even mentioning Valve and its iconic franchises. I always wanted a third game in the PS1 Spider-Man series that consisted of Spider-Man 2000 and Enter Electro. But of course, the Sam Raimi movies came along, so that never happened. Uh-oh. This pattern goes beyond the games, ladies and gentlemen. Strap in and strap on! Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, amazing. Spider-Man 3, not as good. Terminator 2, amazing. Terminator 3, not as good. Shrek 2, brilliant sequel. Shrek the 3rd, not as good. Jaws 2, not as good as the original, but dear God, I'd rather watch that than fucking Jaws 3D. And much like your beloved Half-Life series, look at Ghostbusters. We waited for years and never got a true third movie in the franchise. Until 2009, when the Ghostbusters video game released with the original cast and was the absolute tits. This is a really fun game, and it's now considered by many to be the unofficial Ghostbusters 3. And rightly so, because this feels like I'm playing the movie. Of course, any game that comes on three discs means you're in for a cinematic experience, that's for certain. But what's also certain is that every single game company's third console is going to be a shit show. Look at PlayStation 3 as the perfect example. This is what happens when you spend too much time stroking your ego dick. You squirt out a poorly executed nightmare. Hilariously, Xbox made the same mistake the following generation with the Xbox One. I'll never forget their E3 announcement. There really is no escape, is there? But this pattern also applies to older systems from Nintendo and Sega. Look at the N64. Yes, still a really solid machine with a great library of games, but... Nintendo was stuck in the past with their choice of format, and it ultimately hurt them in the long run. Of course, they made up for it with the GameCube and then the Wii, until the Wii U came along and botched it again. And let's not forget, Sega didn't even recover after jumping the gun on the Saturn, and were done just one console later. As you can see, it doesn't matter what angle you look at this from, Every game can be linked back to the number three. So, what do we know about this strange phenomenon? We know that the largest focus of any series always lies with the number three. That's why we see so many trilogies, and series of trilogies, because the best things always come in three. Within all of these trilogies, the third game is quite often considered the greatest experience of them all. However, more common is that the third game starts the fall in quality for a lot of franchises, making the second game its glorious peak. And that can be related back to consoles as well. Just look at the Mega Drive, the Super Nintendo, PlayStation 2, or Xbox 360. They're all whopper systems, and the second of their trilogies. And finally, there are a large quantity of series that are lucky to even get a third installment, if they even get it at all. But the question we're left with is... Why? What's the purpose of focusing all of our attention at the number three? Has this been orchestrated to hide the fact that, unlike movies, the first game of a series is rarely the best quality? There are plenty of examples when games 2 and 3 can't even compete with the original, but it's far less common. 
I think with games, it takes longer to find your footing than it does with movies, and it's just as hard to keep it. So, intentional or not, the patterns of threes keep us focused on the more noteworthy titles to help hide the sometimes embarrassing early days of a franchise. Or maybe I'm just paranoid, who knows. I was just sat here admiring these three shelves when my mind started to wander. Wait a minute. Did you know that it's episode 111 of Square Eye Jack? 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the third episode of this season. Let me know your thoughts on this conspiracy with a comment down below, followed with liking, subscribing, and sharing the video. I'm Square Eye Jack, and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching. <laughs>